Let's talk about binding. So you're gonna get your drone, your radio, as well as your headset. Last thing you're going to need, which is more mandatory than optional, is a fan. And that's so you can point it at the O3 unit. It gets very hot when it's stationary. Even when it's not stationary and flying, it gets a burning hot. But at least you have the wind and everything to cool it down. And it's sitting on your workbench, you're not gonna have that. So you need a fan to cool it. Very important. The first thing that you're gonna want to do is turn your remote on. Make sure the firmware is up to date. Depending on your headset, for mine, I had to download Download the DJI Assistant 2, the DJI FPV series to update that. Just make sure the firmware is all good there. And then you're also going to want to download the DJI Assistant 2. And this is the DJI Assistant 2 consumer drone series. Once you have those installed, check the firmware, make sure the firmware is up to date. Once that's all good, let's get back to the drone. So we need to put the controller as well as the headset in binding mode. Use your 5D button to navigate. We're going to go into settings. We're gonna go into the about sections all the way at the bottom. From there, press the 5D button forwards or until you see switch aircraft model. From there, click that. And if you are up to date, you should see four options, the DJI FPV, the DJI Digital FPV System, DJI Avada, and DJI O3 Air Unit. Depending on what you're flying is gonna depend on which one of these you have your headset set to. For the Pavo Pico, since we have the O3 Air Unit inside of it, we're going to use the DJI O3 Air Unit. So select that, your headset's gonna ask you to restart. Simply power cycle the headset and then do the same thing, go into settings, go to about, scroll all the way down and make sure that this is set to the DJI O3 air unit. One last thing on the headset, you go to settings, you're gonna want to go to control, and then from control, do you see where it says protocol? You're gonna wanna click that and set that to S bus baud fast. Now, once that is selected, you can put this into bind mode. Putting this into bind mode, you're going to look on the side that has the battery on it. From here, look underneath the headset. So for this part, you're gonna see the power cable that goes into the headset. Underneath that power cable, right under there, is going to be a small hole, very tiny hole. You're gonna to wanna to use something sharp and something small to go into that hole. You're gonna press and then press and long hold. So press, press and hold until the headset starts beeping. Then it is in bind mode. For remote controller, it's a little bit easier. All you're going to want to do once it's powered on is press and hold the power button. That's it, press and hold until it starts beeping. This is in bind mode as well. From here, you're gonna to want to put the battery into the drone terminal. This little bit, don't worry about it, we'll come back to it later the aircraft will be powered on. Now to bind it, you're going to look at the right side of the aircraft. From there, you're going to see a small hole at the very bottom. There's actually a little triangle pointing to it as well. You're gonna use that same small object for the headset to press and hold down here, and it should start flashing red. Once it's connected, it'll be a solid green. If you need to reset any of the bindings, like something you didn't bind or anything, just redo the steps. So for like the headset, you gotta press, press and hold that button again. And then for the remote controller, just press and hold the power button. But I didn't have any issues with this and I don't know anyone else to have had issues. So if you do, let me know in the comments below and we'll solve it together. That's pretty much it for the bind, guys. Now we can go ahead and put it into beta flight and configure everything. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and download Beta Flight. So let's open up a new tab or just go into your search bar. You're gonna type in Beta Flight and then it's going to be this one. So it's going to be the github.com slash beta flight slash beta flight configuration releases. For releases, I'm doing the latest one. So that's 10.10. You're gonna scroll all the way down until you reach assets. So once you reach assets, you're going to want to download the installer for whichever system that you're running. So I'm currently on Mac OS. I would be getting the Mac OS one on my Windows PC. I have this executable file. The zip and the executable are the same thing. One is just a zip and one is just you're executing it as soon as you install it. So typically you're gonna want either a Mac OS or the Windows installer. Once that's done, run everything, make sure it gets installed. If you are on Mac OS, you might have to go into your security settings and allow this to install. Same thing with Windows, except Windows will immediately give you a prompt and tell you, hey, this might be harmful, do you want to install? It's not harmful, at least that I know of. So you should be good. So allow that to install and we should be able to open beta flight. Opening beta flight, it's going to look something like this. From our beta FPV kit, we are going to want to get this little board right here, as well as the connector that goes from the quad into here. So it's going to be a white end, with black cables, white end, and then it's gonna to go to this board, which has a tan connector, and then it's gonna to go to the tan connector on the quad. So it's pretty much this setup right here. It has a USB-C on the end, so you're gonna to want to use a USB-C to USB-C or USB-C to USB-A cable, whatever you need to plug it into your laptop. From there, you should see lights on the bottom. 
that come on. Now notice I don't have the battery in yet. It should pop you up into the setup menu. So I'm only gonna go over the important parts which you need to put on to go and fly. So if you tilt the drone, the drone should move here. That's like the first step. Make sure everything moves as it should be right here. So drone is moving and it's moving inside the screen. That's perfect. Now we're going to go into ports. Depending on your version and everything, that's important. If you change anything, you're gonna to want to save and reboot. I think usually UART 1 is turned on by default, but I have UART 5 selected and that's what I'm using, that's what works. The other two tabs we're gonna focus on are receiver modes, as well as the CLI. If your drone does disconnect during this process, it's normal, don't worry, it sometimes happens. Just make sure that the disconnect button is not disconnected, it is connected. Now is where we're gonna to want to go into the receiver tab. So for the receiver tab, we're gonna to want to make sure that serial via UART is connected and then SBUS is connected for the serial receiver provider. This is important because this is the DJI protocol. Make sure you always save whenever you do anything. And for modes, these are my different modes. You can always play around with them. Briefly discuss what these are. So auxiliary four is the start stop button on the DJI remote. It's going to be this back one right here. That's gonna be my arm. And I'll actually show you that right now. So let's plug in the battery and I'll show you it on the remote. Battery connected, drone on. Now remember guys, it's gonna get hot. So let's turn on this fan. You might be able to hear the fan, so sorry about that, but let's not overheat this unit. Make sure the remote is on. And you can see when I change certain things on my remote, look at this pointer right here. It should change, okay, I'm in this one. So that will change like that. So my arm button is the start stop button. So when I press it, you can see it'll go to arm. It will highlight red. And that's just because when you're connecting your drone to your computer, it's not going to arm the motors. That's just a safety thing. So to disarm it, press this again. Boom, it goes back to outside of its scope. You can adjust this scope to whatever you like. You can also exit on the side right here if there's one that you don't want. I'm only flying in angle mode, which is basically you're leveled out forward, side to side. It's level, kind of like you're flying in Nevada in normal mode. And that's how I have it binded. It is auxiliary one, and that is the end mode, normal. Now, if I flick this to sport, you can see it goes to the middle. Now, if we're armed, we're going to be in full acro mode. And that's pretty much it. I have this beeper, but I don't think I have a little speaker or anything on my drone. I have that binded to this one. And how do you know which button you're binding to? pretty easy actually if you click this you click auto right here once you click auto whatever you press it's going to put it right here so I'm in auto I'm gonna press C1 you can see it automatically went to auxiliary 5 I have my flip over after crash as auxiliary 2 and that's basically the turtle mode so that's going to be this one this is auxiliary 2 when I push it all the way here we're in turtle mode and that's pretty much it for the receiver guys just to make sure everything's working go to receiver and whoa my guy is flipping you should see all of these being adjusted. So you can kind of like, I guess, fly your drone inside of here, technically. Now, if that's not happening, don't worry because this took me forever to figure out. Make sure everything is saved. We're gonna want to go to the CLI. Inside of here, you're gonna want to do set and then S bus, and then you should have the prompt right here come up and just press tab. It's gonna autofill it, S bus body fast you're going to want to set that to be equal to on i already have mine turned on so i'm not going to do it but that's what you're going to need to do you're going to want to press enter and then from there you're just going to want to type save press enter and that will save everything now go back to oh mine just disconnected so like i said it's totally fine if it does that now go back to receiver and you should have input reflecting right here if you don't please leave a comment below let me know let's figure this out together because this took me forever and i definitely needed some help